All right, so dodging rain today and ended up making a run out west towards Alabama. And the first turtle that greeted us was this old female striped neck musk turtle. Found her walking across the bottom. So gonna release her and let her get back in her creek and we'll see how many more we can get. She's just gonna kind of disappear into the water. Oh, I didn't record that. Oh, there she is down there. <laughs> Jersey's first striped neck ever caught <laughs> here in Alabama, not Georgia. For real. Wow. All right, just got this uh, large male right after uh, this smaller male over here. So uh, the density is really up today, which is really good. Um, it's always awesome to come to this creek and see so many awesome striped neck musk turtles, especially these older guys uh, with these big old noggins. Always impressive. and. Just beautiful, clear water, awesome habitat. Uh, really hard to beat Alabama, man. It's one of the best places on earth. So this is really unique. This turtle is obviously an older striped neck, but he has a straight up hole going through his shell, uh, likely from some kind of predator trying to make a meal out of this guy. And he survived it obviously a long time ago, but you can see that there's like, it's just skin in there, but it does cover his uh, internal organs. and. You know, he's obviously been living in this creek perfectly fine, but that is a gnarly injury. I would never in a million years expect to see that. So pretty awesome. And I mean, other than that, that's a pretty handsome dude. That's kind of like if um, like Denzel had a missing leg or something, he'd still be good looking. So I'm gonna let this guy go and see what else we get. Kevin spotted this rat snake shed right after uh, I got done taking a few photos of this old one-eyed male loggerhead. I'm gonna call this guy One-Eyed Willie. Pretty cool. So that's a loggerhead with a lot of miles on it. So pretty good find. Found him uh, over here in this floodplain creek. And uh, gonna let Kevin film him. Always a good time out in the creeks. Yes, sir. All right, here's a uh, stink pot. When I first saw it, I thought maybe this was the mud turtle I've been looking for, but no, this is just a uh, stink pot with a lot of extra pattern on the face. Uh, that's actually pretty common here. And uh, just overall pretty good looking male stink pot. Uh, gonna let him go and continue the search. Right, so right here in this little side water, little baby stink pot. This is probably actually a year old. Um, they're actually really tiny when they hatch out, probably the size of about a nickel. And so this is about, I would probably call this a yearling. So yeah, in their first year, they still are really tiny when they come out, but really cool turtles. Always fun to find these guys. And uh, as you can see, pretty feisty. Let's see, yeah, this guy, yeah, he's not gonna bite. But really cool little turtle. I love the stink pots. I love all the musk turtles. So we're gonna let this guy go and keep looking. See you later, homie. Okay, got another nice stink pot right here next to this log. Let's get to check him out. Yep, little female stink pot. Look at that. I'm so tough, put me down. <laughs> Oh, these guys are so comical and so cool. Look at the, the stripes on the face are actually the diagnostic that you're gonna look for in identifying these from other musk turtles. And uh, pretty uh, distinct. So let's let this one go back where we found it. 
It'll go bury itself in the bottom or go run and find some cover. All right, so today I'm out and I'm in North Georgia. I'm at a spot where a buddy of mine had told me uh, he had looked for striped neck musk turtles and didn't see any. And I know that in the past, this was a place that had been poached pretty heavily for those turtles. So I'm out today to see if I can find any. Um, I had a nice little warm up a few days ago in Alabama with my friends, Kevin in Jersey. But today back here in Georgia and gonna see if we can find some striped neck musk turtles. Hopefully this is a population that hasn't been impacted by poaching. Um, but I know it has, a, has occurred here before, so uh, hopefully we find some. All right, so usually when I look for these turtles, I'm gonna look at the bottoms of uh, these little riffles like this where the water is spilling over uh, all these rocks and then usually the pool immediate to the bottom of it is a good place to find them. They're down there like grabbing up little snails and little things that are kind of coming down the, the water. Don't see anything yet, but I'm still just barely in this creek. All right, so right here in front of me, after about an hour hike in, my first striped neck moss turtle in this creek. So really stoked. Let's get in a little closer, get a good view of it. They barely stick out. I barely see that. That is a pretty old girl. And you can see they look a little bit different than the ones from Alabama. Uh, these tend to be a little bit darker uh, a lot more orange as opposed to the yellow that you see on the ones in uh, eastern Alabama. But really pretty turtles. Really hard to beat a, a good old striped neck moss turtle. All right, so let's talk about why I'm not really finding anything today. First of all, it is the middle of July. The middle of July is notoriously like the worst time of year for trying to find turtles during the middle of the day. It's just too hot. The water temperature itself is way warmer than it normally is in this stream. So turtles are kind of up under the banks, underneath logs, buried in mud. And then early, early morning, late afternoon, even at night, they're gonna come out and do their foraging. I can look at, a, I can look at the bottom and see that they are here and they are running around and foraging on the bottom. You can see all the little pits and tracks and everything where they've dug around at the bottom. So it's a lot of times the time of year is gonna affect how much stuff you find. Uh, July and August is, I hate to say it, just always like the worst time of year. Most of the time this time of year, I'm gonna be out at night. Uh, so right now, I'm gonna keep looking, just see what I can get. But um, so far the one turtle has made me happy. It's better than, you know, big fat goose egg. So I'm gonna keep going and we'll see what I get. Great, so I was checking out this riffle and I saw a little green thing and I actually had to make a dive for it. And it was a little juvenile. Look how pretty this guy is. Just a perfect example of a young striped neck musk turtle. And when they're at this size, you can really see the uh, pattern behind the eyes and on the jaws that gives them their name. 
really just a classic example and super cool to see that they are uh, still in here, still reproducing. This individual is probably three or four years old, but uh, we're gonna release them over here in the sun where you guys can get a good look at how this guy's gonna move through the rocks and how well they blend in. Look at that. He's gonna go find a place to wedge himself. And they really are just a very discreet looking turtle when they're on the bottom. See, he's gonna actually partially bury himself. That's another hiding technique that they'll utilize is to kind of partially bury themselves so they do look like a stone. All right, so I was waiting this pool and this little juvenile zipped out in front of me and I had to chase him up to the shallow water area so I could bend over and pick him up. But these guys are super fast when they're little like this. And uh, look at that beautiful shell. What an awesome looking turtle. So really cool. It looks like I'm getting into a little bit better area of the population. And you know, this little male is a prime example of a juvenile striped neck musk turtle. So we're gonna let him go and keep on moving down the creek. Well, that was epic. So in these days that are super hot during July, uh, the deeper pools end up being the cooler water, especially deeper pools like this where you have the overhanging trees keeping the water cool. And you're gonna find a lot more of the musk turtles and you know, even other turtles you're gonna find kind of taking refuge in this while it gets so hot during the day. So I'm gonna kind of scan this pool, see if I see anything else. But with these huge boulders, I mean, most of your turtles are gonna be actually tucked up inside those boulders. Look at that, that's such an epic slab. This would be really fun to snorkel. I wish I had brought my mask. Like I, like I was saying, it's just beautiful habitat here. The, the crystal clear water is just, uh, just makes it so fun to come and look. You know, I mean, I could come here and not find anything, but just getting to be in this habitat just makes it all worth it. So this power line run actually creates a really neat spot in this uh, stream where it's just all these boulders and then the water just is different pools kind of cascading through here. So I'm going to walk down through here and uh, I know there's one, I've been here a few years ago, there's a little beach area down here and it's really good for doing some underwater swimming. Let's see if it's still there. Yep, still there just the way I remembered it. Little beach area there. Nice set of pools. So, oh, there goes a water snake. Big water snake going downstream. All right, so now I made it down here, down onto the boulders uh, near the little beachy type area. The water snake went over into those bushes over there. Uh, but pretty neat little area. Somebody did some rock stacking. Um, just my two cents, rock stacking kind of sucks because people like to pull these rocks out of the creek to do all this goofy rock stacking. And that's actually habitat for crayfish, snails, uh, helgramites, all kinds of little invertebrates. And even, you know, small turtles use that as a place to hide. So I think your need to stack rocks and get an Instagram photo kind of is a little bit less important than an animal's place to live. Just my two cents. Found a turtle egg. This was in the water. Uh, so likely it's no good, but... <laughs> Just to give it a fair chance, I'll go put it up on the shoreline in a sandy area and bury it. But it's pretty full of water and it's probably rolled down the creek, but we'll go up here and give this egg another chance. Get underneath all this rock right here. Find a nice little area for this egg. There we go. Gently set it down in there. Cover it with some sand. And maybe, just maybe, if I caught that early enough, the turtle will hatch. Otherwise, worms gotta eat too. All right, so I'm heading back upstream, back towards the car. Had a pretty good day in here. Did find some striped neck musk turtles. Didn't see any other turtles, but um, overall, pretty good day. I was a little concerned that there may not be much of a population left here, but for 
a really hot day in July, finding three of them in a pretty short order. They were all pretty close to each other. Kind of tells me, um, gives me an idea of where the population is concentrated and that they are still here and, you know, getting a large adult female and then some juveniles, you know, it does show that there's reproducing populations. So pretty stoked on that. Gonna head back to the car and maybe try somewhere else a little bit later.